outback Australia, an unforgiving territory, and a land of amazing creatures, where sometimes nature needs a helping hand. These are the everyday heroes bound by a single mission to save wildlife anywhere, anytime. On Outback Wildlife Rescue, the world's most dangerous catch. Andy just hit him with a harpoon. A nighttime mission chasing a croc that's gone bad. It's a female, big female. The snake that couldn't say no. I'll be darned. The biggest meal it's ever had could cost its life. And one of the sky's tough guys has been grounded. I certainly don't want to get nailed. But he's still armed and dangerous. Australia's wildlife is as diverse as its landscape. From the tropical Queensland coast to the Northern Territory and monsoonal Darwin and the nearby Kakadu wetlands and on 1,500 kilometres to the red deserts of Alice Springs and beyond. Ranger Tommy Nichols, along with his offsiders Rob and Andy, are in for a big night. They're on the Adelaide River, an hour or so south of Darwin. Okay, a lot of mud there, gonna get slippery. They're searching for a dangerous croc, a big male that's been terrorising okay. fishing boats. We've had a report this week from four different boats about a crocodile which is between 3.6 and uh, 4 metres. Now, they, it appears to be injured. Now, whether it's been injured from a fight or from a propeller on a boat, we don't know. The local fishermen are completely spooked. It's up to Tommy to catch him, and it's going to be hand-to-hand -hand combat. So we've got a harpoon line with a three-prong head on it because it's a fairly big animal. The harpoon barbs are harmless. They catch just under the croc's tough hide to attach a rope. It's safest for everyone and is easily removed later. Working at night makes spotting the crocs a lot easier. You know, you see the eye shines and you see the, how wide the part their eyes are, and you just sort of a bit of an estimation of how big, you know, oh, yeah, it's going to be a big one, you know. Two eyes wide apart means a big croc. That's what they're looking for. There are crocs everywhere. Nothing big enough yet, but they're out there. And remember, the big crocs are on the hunt too. You need to be ready for it. You know, if you're not ready for it, you know, you, you're actually putting yourself in in danger and, and, the, and your teammates as well. They can't relax. Tommy's hand is proof enough of that. But up ahead, on the bank, could be the croc thereafter. Hey, that could be the one. Let's get close. Okay. This hunt is about to get serious. In Alice Springs, Justin Rutherford is having a busy night too. He's a wildlife rescue volunteer on duty 24-7. Hopefully it's still, still in. Still there. Tonight, Henny's found a bird in her backyard and there's something very wrong. It's been sitting there for hours and can't fly away. Oh, OK, yes. Oh, oh hello, buddy. Why are you so he, low in the tree? It's all right. The dogs were barking furiously, and then I thought maybe it's a cat. But obviously, um, well, I didn't know at the time, so I went out and put the dogs inside and went out and uh, looked in the fork of the tree, and it wasn't a cat, it was what looked like a hawk or a falcon. I was trying to see if I can see any obvious injuries on him. Sitting that low in the tree is certainly not a good indication. Uh, if he can't get up and fly properly, he's obviously out of energy. You know, he's got other, another serious problem. I don't know much about birds, but yes, his the wings like the a bit. looks displaced. Yeah, his wing is yeah, dropping down right a bit, but he's certainly not in a hurry to get away. So what I'll do, let's see if I can just quietly get a bag over him and get him in somewhere nice and dark. Do you want, do you want something to come up like No, this no, that's right. I'm just leaving how he is. Yeah. He's going to fixate on me with a bit of luck, but I don't want him flapping and falling 
down through this fence at all. I certainly don't want to get nailed. On the fence? No, I'm worried about his, uh, his talons oh. or his little beak. They do tend to sting a little bit. G'day, buddy. What's up with you, mate? This is a black kite, a raptor or bird of prey. It's the most common bird of prey in the world. And in Australia, they can form huge flocks. But this one is lonely and weak. Come on, you settle in there. Settle in. Oh, we've got him. That's, that's great. What are you doing? Can you set up on your hands? Your feet are working OK, mate. What's your wing doing? Isn't he just beautiful? The capture's only the start. The real question is why can't he fly? Just trying to work out what's going on, mate. Settle, settle, settle. If he can't move his wing, as a, as a bird of prey that's, that needs his wings for hunting, it's, it's not going to survive in the wild. So um, we'll get him into the vets and we'll get him checked out. The little kite's future could be grim. On the Adelaide River, south of Darwin, Tommy thinks he's found his rogue croc. This one here is close to the target size. Let's get close. OK. It could be the injured male they're looking for. OK, we've got what we believe is a target animal. Andy just hit him with a harpoon, so there's a three-pronged harpoon in him. We're getting another harpoon ready, so we'll just see how well he, this one went in, and we may put another harpoon in him. So we're just in the process of playing him, like just like a fish. We're waiting for him to come to the surface. He came back up, and he took another breath, so he's gone back down again. We're just going to it's a wait-and-see situation at the moment. That's exactly what the croc's thinking, too. Justin's rescued a kite from an Alice Springs backyard, but he doesn't know what's wrong with it. So he's paying a late night visit to local vet Tanya McFadden. Black kites, they're very common around here. Okay, you know... Kites hunt small animals, but eat roadkill too. And when they're threatened, they've got a habit that's making Tanya's job harder. Their defence is just to drop and play dead, so they're very hard to actually get anything out of them. She's got fairly good responses. She's got nothing in her mouth. She's actually got no feather damage. She's got no stress marks. She's not missing any feathers. A bit ratty down the bottom, which indicates she might have been on the ground for a few days. Let me look at your feet, sweet pea. Fairly clean feet. Um, so I just think she's suffered a lot from the heat. Looks like the kite's problem could be as simple as heat exhaustion. I think the best thing for this little tacker is just to um, have her in a cage. I'm going to give her some fluids and just uh, see how she goes in the next few days. On the Adelaide River, Tommy thinks he's harpooned his rogue croc, but the capture's far from over. OK, we just got a second harpoon in. Just drop it on the floor there, mate. Yeah, I guess harpoon's um, dangerous, uh, as the animal's a lot more free to move around. It's not restrained by the trap. This close to the boat, he's at his most dangerous. Using their muscular tail, crocs can launch right out of the water like a missile. OK, what we're going to do now, we're going to put a plastic tie, secure his jaw so we can have a better look at him. This one's big enough and cranky enough to be the croc they're after. But is it? A couple of things don't fit the description. Don't stay in too long, Robert. Yep, yeah, that's a little bit. It's a female, big female. OK, now that could be half the reason why this croc has been behaving in this manner. 
because it is going on to breeding season, that's so she might be pretty ooh, cranky and sometimes the propellers on an outboard motor do tend to annoy them. So there's a possibility that this may have agitated her. She might be a bit annoyed with other boats. So uh, certainly there's no visible injuries in this animal whatsoever. No one wants to see the wrong animal removed unnecessarily. Not a great deal we can do more than that. With no obvious injuries, it's unlikely she's been harassing fishing boats. And with breeding season approaching, she needs to be released, not relocated. Now, will she come up again? Yep, there she is, beautiful. Everything's off, all the tape, we're beautiful. Well done, fellas. Tommy and the boys never did find that big, cranky male croc in the river. The good news is, it must have calmed down. There's been no more trouble since that night. In Queensland, the local surfers are up early. And so is Biwa vet John Hanger. Inside this bag is a patient who's bitten off more than he can chew. What happened to him? He, um, he's had a nice feed and, um, and then it looks like something's attacked him. He's a lovely specimen, isn't he? It's a harmless brown tree snake. By unhinging its jaw, it can eat frogs and birds. But that big bulge is a sure sign his last meal was just too ambitious. It's stuck. There's a couple of punctures here that, that, I'm, that I am worried about. They, they look fairly deep and they may actually go through to the stomach. The snake couldn't move and something attacked it, puncturing its skin. And I'm also worried that whatever's in his stomach um, might be starting to push through the wall of his bowel as well. So that would be catastrophic. An X-ray will give John a better idea of what he and the snake are dealing with. John's seen just about everything, but even for him, the result is spectacular. I'll be done. At Biwa, the brown tree snake x-rays are in. John will be able to see just what the snake's been eating. I'll be done. It's huge. There's no way the snake could digest it. If not rescued, he'd soon have died. The snake swallowed a bird, and, the, and these guys are, well, they're bird and frog eaters, so that's no surprise. I'm just trying to figure out what sort of bird it is. It's got quite, quite long legs, so it's probably um, mainly a ground-dwelling bird, and it's got a, a um, fairly pointy bill. To save the snake, John will have to operate straight away. What we'll have to do is just investigate those, those puncture wounds. Um, we might actually have to open up on either side of that that deep puncture and just make sure that the stomach's not been punctured or damaged at all. It may seem a lot of trouble to go to, but to John, every life is worth saving. The bird has to come out. But does that mean there's a chance it's going to survive too? Uh, no, it's not. I mean, it's covered in saliva. They um take their prey fairly liberally with saliva before they swallow it so that it, you know, so it goes down easily. So that's the, the hole in the stomach. And the issue with this is that um, when that bird starts to go rotten, we're gonna get stomach fluids oozing out of this hole and, um, and it's gonna cause a severe peritonitis that would probably kill this snake. The tricky part is taking out the bird without doing any more damage. It's delicate work, and for the snake, it's touch and go. They miss out on one feed, but hopefully save his life. Back in Alice Springs, the black kite is getting over his heat exhaustion. But vet Tanya McFadden reckons he's not quite ready for release. I've decided to put him into the bigger aviary. Um, he needs to keep his uh, flight up and this will help him do that. He's not ready to be released because he needs to be fattened up a little bit. So this is the cage we're putting him in and we'll just make sure, keep an eye on him in the next day or two that he's feeding himself and uh, not batting around too much. 
Living in the desert is tough at the best of times. The kite will need every bit of his strength to hunt and look after himself in the wild. So until then, this research centre aviary is the perfect halfway house. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Come on, don't bat around. Tanya will check on him every day, but it's no chore. With luck, she'll be releasing him in a week or so. So every day here is time well spent. I love all animals. I've, I have done all my life. Um, and I just... Uh, I've wanted to work with animals all my life and, and I think um, every species of, of birds of prey are different. They've got personalities and they're just a beautiful, beautiful bird. And I love them. <laughs> Biwa vet John Hanger is removing the ambitious brown tree snakes last supper. Without this operation, it wouldn't have survived. If infection didn't kill it first, another predator would have come along and taken advantage of this two-for-one meal deal. We've opened up the, the skin and then the, the tissues that sit under the skin and then we've had to open the stomach to get the bird out, so we've got to actually sew up each one of those individual layers, so I'm just working on the stomach now. The new slimline snake is carefully stitched back together. It's a delicate business. I've got to be careful that my, my sutures and the repair that I do doesn't uh, constrict the stomach too much so it can't hold a, a, a big food item. We certainly will stop him from feeding um, for a couple of weeks at least while this heals up. And yeah, he will be hungry, but he could go for months without um, without eating, uh, and then what we'll do is just start him on fairly small feed items that don't require his, his stomach to stretch too much uh, and don't require a lot of energy to digest. When he's sort of able to, to handle a, a sort of half-size rat um, size meal, we'll, we'll probably release him. In terms of his, his chances after this, they're very good. I mean, snakes handle this sort of operation quite well. Um, as, as long as we get a good seal on the stomach and, um, and, and make sure that they don't get an infection, there, there should be no, no issues with this snake going back out into the wild within uh, a few weeks. The snake might wake up hungry, but it looks as though he's going to survive. So this little fellow is well and truly ready to go then? Yeah, he's, he's all good. He's, uh, the black kite has recovered from his exhaustion and is ready to return to the skies above Alice Springs. After a week resting, he's hanging out to go. The first few days I had him, he was quite quiet. He was happy just to sit quite often on the ground, which isn't a usual thing. Um, but after that, he just got stronger and stronger and stronger. And you can almost sense that he just wants to leave. They need to get him in the bag as fast as possible to reduce the stress on the bird and themselves. You big silly. Uh, so yeah, from the flying in. Nah. Oh, settle, mate, settle. Justin knows an ideal spot to release the kite. It's just a short drive away, and then he'll finally be free. Southern side of the range? Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. All good? Right, yeah. Yep. Too easy. When this brown tree snake arrived in Biwa, it was bloated and close to death after biting off far more than it could handle. But now he's ready to be released. This little snake had swallowed a, a bird and, um, and either that bird or the bird's mate had caused a number of punctures to him, um, one of which had gone into the stomach. So he, he would um, almost certainly have died had we not operated on him. And um, he sealed up really well. Now it's time to let him go. Irrespective of whether it's common or small or, or big or, or scaly or s slimy, 
I think that's one of the most important things we need to teach people is, is, is compassion for all things, not just cute things or furry things. And I think that's one of the most incredible things about this hospital is it has a huge ability to change the attitudes of people. There's a last minute snag releasing the black kite. Bigger birds of prey. We've got a slight concern. There's a couple of wedge-tailed eagles up over on the top of the range there. Um, so we might just wait a while, I think, and just let them move on a bit before we let this guy go. Um, you know, being a bird of prey and being a bit territorial, <laughs> the last thing we need is this little fellow getting hassled straight away. Eventually, the eagles catch their thermal and glide away. For the kite, it's time. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah, he sure is. Yeah, he's off. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Go, okay, buddy, go. Yeah. Beautiful. Perfect. Come on, buddy, up you go, up That's you go. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to probably perch up on one of those trees up there and yeah. have a look. Oh, at least he's got somewhere nice and high to find his bearings, which yeah. is good. Yeah. So. Can't get any better than that. No, that's all we want. Perfect. Well done. Eyes are kind. Good on you, Tristan. <laughs>